Hello to all my bookish and booktube friends. I am Linda and I'm here to talk about what I read during the month of June 2021. So I survived June. Very happy to say and I hope that you did too. Uh, June has been an interesting month. I had to get my car registered and uh, it was a project that carried over to this month. I finally got that taken care of. What a relief uh, just to have that off my mind. And I have other things that I'd like to tell you about, but I'm going to wait until I get to my life update video, which I'm going to probably film after I film this one and the TBR video. And so that is my plan for today, is just to film some videos from my booktube channel, starting with this uh, June wrap-up. So in the month of June, we had what we call Pastoral June. Pastoral June was started by Angie at Literary Labors, and she had a co-host who I don't know. Sorry, co-host. Uh, Pastoral June was wonderful. The group read was called Lark Rise to Candleford, and it is a three books, three books in one volume series. It was, the three books were combined into one volume in the year 1945. And basically she wrote a lot of essays about life in her childhood home. Uh, her childhood home was a little hamlet in England called Juniper Hill, but in the book she called it Lark Rise. And there was another market town not too far from where she lived called Candleford Green. And that was on the outskirts of what is called Candleford in the books. It was actually the town of Buckingham in England. So the books start in Lark Rise, the name she used for Juniper Hill. And it told about her life growing up in this little hamlet and it was pretty primitive back then and she went into great detail about what life was like there what the people there were like it was just fascinating the whole thing so the second book in the series uh, was over to Candleford where she had relatives so she and her brother got to go visit them it was about eight miles away and then the third uh, book in the series was called Candleford Green and that chronicled the time when she went to work in Candleford Green at the age of 15 and she was working in the post office. Great series. Uh, it wasn't really a memoir. There was apparently a lot of fiction to it. She changed the names. She may have added things. It's impossible to know. But pretty much it was based on her childhood. So it was a memoirish fiction. <laughs> Anyhow, I enjoyed it. Also for Pastoral June, I read The Moore Child. I read this as uh, for a prompt to read a children's book that was uh, in a pastoral setting. And this book is just amazing. I just loved this book. It's called The Moore Child by Eloise McGraw. It was a Newbery Honor book. And I loved it. It's written for ages 9 to 12. It was about a little girl who was born in a group of fairies. And uh, it became obvious after a while that this little girl was not all fairy and they decided they wanted to get rid of her so they turned her into a changeling and they exchanged her for a human baby in a nearby village so she grew up as a human in that village and turned into a pretty nice little girl but she did have some fairyish ways about her because she was half fairy i thought this book was adorable it was charming it's precious I recommend it to anyone, not just children. Adults would like this too, obviously. I'm an adult and I liked it.
anyhow, more for Pastoral June. What else did I read for Pastoral June? Well, I did read The Endless Step, and that was in a pastoral setting of Siberia. This girl was, a, I guess she was about nine or ten, and the Russians came to her home. Uh, it was in a town called Vilna in Poland, and they took out a lot of people, I think they were mainly Jewish people, and transported them in cattle cars to Siberia, and that is where they had that pastoral experience of having to work like in the potato fields and things like that. Um, she lived there for five years. This is a true story. This happened back during World War II, and it just makes you grateful for what you have because they lived with uh, just a lot of poverty and deprivation while they were there. I recommend this memoir. It is The Endless Step by Esther Hotzig. Also for Pastoral June, I had planned to read Hawks Hill. And unfortunately, I did not read Hawks Hill. Um, I read the first two chapters. I got started on it. Pretty interesting. It's, it's about a boy who does not relate well to people, but he does relate well with animals. He copies them, he makes friends with them, he talks to them, and that's all I got out of the first two chapters. Now I do know that this little boy is going to get lost and be taken care of by a female badger, which is why we have a female badger picture on the cover. So this also is a Newbery Honor book. Really, really looking forward to finishing it, and We'll do so soon. At the beginning of last month, I was going to read The End of Bomb. I had like maybe two or three chapters left to read. I got to find out what happened to all the people who spied and sold secrets to the Soviets during World War II. Very interesting book. I recommend this if you want to know more about why the atomic bomb was developed by the scientists here in the United States. For the Pop Sugar Reading Challenge, I read Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. It's written for a young adult audience, mainly teenagers, and that was the main character was a teenager. He had a very unusual grandfather who died at the beginning of the novel, and the grandfather wanted him to go to this island and... Uh, the story unfolds. It is magical realism. There's a little bit of horror in there, which I don't like horror. So when it got to the really horrific chapter, which was towards the end, I, I really did not feel comfortable with that. But the rest of it was just fine and glad I read it, but I won't be reading the sequels because, like I said, I am not into horror. I read it for the Pop Sugar Reading Challenge because they wanted me to read a book with a black and white cover, and I chose that one. My Ramona thing. I was reading the entire boxed set of Ramona books and I got to this one, book number seven out of eight, and I finished it. And then book number eight out of eight, I finished most of it. <laughs> I still have two more chapters to read, so almost there, almost to the end of the entire boxed set. Spin number two, I had to read the first book on my list of 20 books, and it was The White Stag by Kate Saraday, a Newbery medal winner back in 1948, I believe. I didn't like this book at all. Oh, I think it was 38. Anyhow, I really did not like this book. I liked the pictures in it. She's a very talented artist, and... I thought the pictures were much better than the book, the text of the book. The text of the book was about the family of Attila the Hun, starting with, I guess, his great-grandfather, and then his grandfather, and his father, and then each one of those got one part of the book, and the fourth part was about Attila the Hun, and she didn't go into graphic detail on all the bloody mess that these people created, but I mean... I wasn't thrilled about them or reading about them, but it was sort of like, uh, she's Hungarian, apparently, and Attila the Hun invaded the Hungary, 
area, which is why it is called Hungary. And anyhow, not recommended for people who like good books, but some people liked it. Sort of an epic sort of thing with grandiloquent speech that I really didn't like. Okay, enough about that, but I got it done. And let's see what else happened. I was doing, uh, for one of the Goodreads groups, there was a challenge for May and June, and the books that I had to read, uh, I had read almost everything during May, but during June I read this one, The Endless Step, for that challenge, and also The Yellow Wallpaper, which is more of a short story, but it's usually found in book form. It's very short, The Yellow Wallpaper. Uh, interesting book. It's a classic. It was about a woman who was mainly confined to one solitary room in which the wallpaper seemed to be driving her insane. But it's a little bit more complicated than that. In case you're wondering what I really thought about any of these books, I've been writing a little book review over at Goodreads for each one of them, and I will put the links in the description of this video on YouTube. So there was a couple of audiobooks that I didn't mention in my TBR, but I mean, I always like to have an audiobook in progress, so if I run out of anything to read in audio, and I have been reading most of my things in paperback, obviously, or on Kindle, so I will go and get another audiobook. So. The first one I got was The Wayward Bus by John Steinbeck, which was Something that I noticed over on Goodreads because another booktuber, Dane Cobain, read The Wayward Bus and wrote a little review of it, and I read that and decided I was going to read that book because I have read a lot of Steinbeck. Uh, apparently I had not even heard of that one. So strange. So I picked it up in audio and listened to it. It was about a group of people in a little town south of... Salinas, but he changed all the names, just like Lark Rise to Candleford. Again, we were looking at names of real places that had been changed. So he had the story set in a little town called Rebel Corners, just south of uh, another town, a larger town. And in real life, there was a little town there called Confederate Corners, not Rebel Corners south of Salinas, where he lived, and it mainly took place in a restaurant, and it was very character-driven. He did a lot of work to introduce us to each and every character that was going to be taking part, and then towards the end of the book they got on the wayward bus, and I just kept thinking it was a lot of wayward people on the wayward bus, and they did wayward things. So that was interesting. The next book that I read after that was another classic. It was by Wallace Stegner, wonderful writer, a wonderful audiobook performance of The Spectator Bird. And it was about a man who was getting older. He was retired and he was a little on the grumpy side and he was reliving his earlier experience, 20 years earlier, he and his wife went to Denmark and he wrote a journal about it and he was reading that journal and it was fascinating. I really enjoyed that book and recommend it. I'm still doing A Year in Mitford. I didn't like the book this time. This was like the sixth book in the series and the series had been going on in chronological order and then suddenly here in the sixth book we go back about two or three books and talk about the engagement and wedding of Pastor Tim. And okay, I am not fond of reading about weddings. It's just not a topic that I like to talk about. I am a person who had two failed marriages and other failed relationships and I just don't want to talk about it or think about it. So a common life was uh, not the book for me. However, I suffered through it. Thank goodness it was shorter than most of the Mitford novels, and hopefully 
starting with the book this coming month, they'll go back into the future and not be delving into the past. I did get the impression that the reason that they did that uh, particular book, A Common Life, was because there were other readers who were complaining that she didn't spend enough time to writing about the wedding, so she went back and did the whole book about that. The only book that I haven't told you about yet is The Masterpiece by Francine Rivers. I was going to read a different Francine Rivers book, and instead I read The Masterpiece because there was a read-along with Becca of uh, Hicks Picks Books, and she picked a book, The Masterpiece, and I read it on audio, I believe. Yeah, audio. And it was really good. I enjoyed that very much, and I, it only took me a few days to finish it, even though the book was about 500 pages. And it was like one of those things I couldn't put down. It was a romance novel, and it was a Christian romance novel. Um, I'm not really into romance novels, but I did like the Christian part of it. So that pretty much covers everything that I read during the month of June, except for some Christian books that I read, which I'll tell you about in another video. So that's the end of my June wrap-up. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you got some ideas of books that you might like to read in the future, and I'll talk to you later.